Hey guys, it's coffee time. I'm very sad because I was just talking for like a full maybe seven or eight minutes and then looked down and realized that um, the recording had stopped at like 30 seconds in because Sherlock had come over to say hi and had laid on my keyboard. Now, for those of you who've watched me for a while, you know that that's like a fairly common thing, but usually he doesn't do it until, you know, a decent ways in and normally I'll notice that it happened. No, 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 not this time. <laughs> it was like immediately and I did not notice at all that it had happened. So I just went on talking about my life, talking about all the things. So hi, it's been a little bit. I was able to put up videos while we were doing Target, but um, once we were at Comic-Con, let me tell you, if any of you were wondering why barely anybody was getting tweets out, um, if maybe you had a friend at Comic-Con that you were texting that was not responding, here's why. Because there were so many people there, you couldn't do anything. Which was kind of awesome because Comic-Con was just magical. It was like there were so many people and so much going on, but it was all very interesting. Like I loved just wandering around the floor and it was huge. But because you also couldn't text or tweet or anything, you wound up just feeling isolated in this wonderful comforting world of just nerd things everywhere. It was so great. And this was my very first Comic-Con. So pretty much everybody <laughs> that I interacted with treated me like this precious newborn that was just now learning the ways and they would just I would say yeah this is my first comic-con I'm really excited to be here and they'd get this look on their face like oh my gosh it's your first comic-con how do how do you feel do you do you like it like what's been your favorite thing like everybody gets so invested when you're a newbie at comic-con which was so cool because you know everybody always likes to say that the geek world or the nerd world is not very accepting of newcomers. Um, Comic-Con is not like that at all. People at Comic-Con are so excited for new people to be at Comic-Con, even though there are so many people there that you can't even move. <laughs> there were so many times that I would start going down an aisle and I would see just this sea of people and be like, somebody's doing a signing over there, turning around. I managed to see a lot of people a lot of people that I recognized, which was crazy. I didn't talk to like any of them except Rob Krasinski because he was in our Pacific Rim video. So I met him and um, Ben Barnes. I met both of them and they were super cool. But, uh, but like I saw Peter Dinklage from afar. I saw Sandra Bullock from afar, the entire cast of How I Met Your Mother. Um, didn't see Mycroft, but apparently Mycroft was there. I don't know his real name. I can't remember his real name, but Mycroft from BBC Sherlock was apparently there. Um, Hiddleston was there. Like just so many people that I was like, I like you. I think you're real cool. There's so many people over there. I'm just gonna peace out, you know, <laughs> like, it's not worth it, but I'm glad I saw your beautiful face. Um, but yeah, it was, it was crazy. It was so much fun. And, uh, so, okay, let's start from the beginning. So Target ended, and then the very next morning, I got up and went to the train station. And sweet, lovely, darling, happily Erin said that she would take me to the train station, even though it was early. And I said, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now, the train station is called LAX, the same way that the airport is called LAX. So I figured that the train station was attached to the airport, or at least, like, associated with it somehow. That is not true in the slightest. Um, <laughs> I got in the car and I said, you know what? I'm going to GPS this really quick because I honestly didn't look it up, but I think it must be by the airport. And Aaron was like, yeah, you'd think because they're both LAX. And I was like, yeah, that's what I figured. So I look it up. It's nowhere near the airport. It's like deep in the center of LA. And I just look at Aaron and I was like, I will owe you the biggest coffee ever. I am so, 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 so sorry. I will make this up to you somehow. And she was like, okay, it'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll get you there. And I was like, okay, thank you. So we started driving. Fortunately, um, the map program that I have uh, gives you like easiest routes. Like it, it analyzes where traffic is and tries to take you on the easiest route. It's the MapQuest app. 
And, uh, and so we actually got there really easily. I got there in time. She got to work like barely late. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. I owe you everything. And the train ride was beautiful. The train from LA to San Diego is double decker. So I was able to kind of, I went up to the top level. And I was able to, to look out at the beautiful scenery and, you know, accidentally pass out. And it wasn't so full that I had to move my backpack from the seat next to me. So nobody sat next to me and the misanthrope inside of me loved that. And uh, yeah, and then I got to uh, San Diego. I almost said LA. Not true. I almost I got to San Diego and then took the metro from the train station to the convention center. And when I walked out, I was so unbelievably overwhelmed by how many people there were. Like, this dwarfs every other event I've ever been to by leagues. It was incredible. Um... I tried to take pictures. I tried to take pictures. I tried to take video of, of what was going on. It was insane. But because I'm so short, guys, don't understand. Because I'm so short, I was trying desperately to give you an idea of how many people there were. I was holding my arms up like this. You couldn't tell. You could not tell the number of people that were there. And I was just like, no. <laughs> like, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um... But, uh, yeah. And once you're, once you're in the event, it's just, it's just packed out of its mind. But it was kind of a blessing in disguise. You guys watched, well, maybe you didn't. The Daily Bite episode that went up when my voice really went out, um, which I'm calling the smooth jazz episode, uh, <laughs> was just the silliest thing because I couldn't, like, my voice was like there were cobwebs inside of it. It was awful. Um... Don't you dare lay on that again. I swear you're so cute and you obviously missed me and I just love you. But, um, yeah, so I got there and because you couldn't text or tweet or upload anything, um, I was forced to not make videos and everybody for the last couple of days had said, when you're at Comic-Con, don't make videos, just take a break because you sound awful. And even now I don't sound a hundred percent and I'll explain to you why in a minute. But, um, but when I got in there and realized that I literally couldn't do anything with my phone, I, it, it registered to me as the universe saying, calm down and take a break. <laughs> Like, just, you know what? Just don't worry about it. Just enjoy Comic-Con. Give your voice a rest. And then, of course, I immediately went and met up with everybody for the Broken Quest meetup and uh, and just yelled my little heart out because... So we told you guys we were going to be doing a meetup on Friday at 1 o'clock. Um, so the reason that we never updated you on where that was is because suddenly our phones weren't working. Um, so we're like walking along, trying to find a good spot, right? We met up in one spot that we had, you know, predetermined. And then we started walking and every few steps, one of us would get recognized, which was great and so awesome. And we met a bunch of people that way, just literally just trying to find a spot. We met a ton of people, a ton of you, and it was great. But, um, most of the spots that we were like, all right, maybe right here, there would be a guard that would yell at us that we were like upsetting traffic flow. Because, again, there were so many people. So we finally found a spot. And this was at 2.30. Now, we had only allotted up to 3 o'clock that all of us would be able to be there. Um, so at 2.30, we went, okay, let's all tweet. Let's say where we are. And then people can find us. And literally none of us could get a tweet out. <laughs> none of us worked. So... We said, all right, well, let's just keep working this corner like classy people and handing out postcards and handing out buttons. And if we meet people, then that's great. And we're all really sorry that you didn't ever find out where we were, but we tried. I promise you, I promise that we tried. Uh, but let me set the stage for you. So at three o'clock, everybody but Jesse and I had to leave. And we were literally surrounded when you go to an event, let me back up a little. When you go to an event, there are always going to be people on the corners handing things out. And typically, you either take all of them or you learn to become that person that says, no, thank you, because otherwise you wind up with a mountain of just papers that you're going to recycle or don't care about, right? So on this side, we had this really sweet girl who was handing out like weird little pieces of paper for a free movie that people could see. Fine. 
right in front of us were two dudes in giant sweatshirts with sunglasses that were handing out their flyers for a free movie. Fine. On this side, we had the people telling you that going to Comic-Con was a sin and the girls in booty shorts that were handing out cards for their gentlemen's club. <laughs> Which was amazing. I was like, wait, why are you literally right next to each other? It was hilarious. Which meant, of course, since there were so many other people trying to hand things out, I had to be the loudest. I had to be the most pleasant, loudest person out there. And I was so proud of myself. I've never done anything like that, honestly. I've never, ever, like, handed something out at an event like that. Um, I was tossing those out like flip. People were taking them left and right. I was being so loud. I was being so loud because everybody was like, hey, check out my thing. Hey, check out my thing. And I was like, new cartoon show. Hey, guys, new cartoon show. It's super awesome. Premiering next week. We're the voice actors. We worked really hard. It's super free and super awesome. And people were like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, just everybody was taking them. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I felt so great. Um, Jesse and I wound up being able to stay there until all of the stuff was handed out which was awesome. And then we met up with everybody and we were able to get some food and people watch for a while, which of course is very fun. And uh, yeah, and then I, I got to walk around the floor just a little bit. Saturday was the day that I really got to just literally had nothing to do but walk around the floor. And that was awesome. I By the end of the day, my feet and my legs hurt so bad. So bad. It was incredible. But uh but so fun. Oh my gosh. I started off in Artist Alley, which was insanity. Um, there was a original Kirby cover of Daredevil that was going for $95,000. Everybody that I recognized that I like met, I was like, you have to come see the price on this cover. Because that's, that's the sort of price that you give something where you're like, I really don't want to part with this. But if you're willing to give me this much, I will. You know, it's one of those just exorbitant prices where you're like, nobody's ever going to buy it for this much. But if they do, I'm going to be rolling in fliff, right? So basically my rule became if that original drawing is yellowed at all, I'm not even going to look at the price <laughs> because it's out of my range. I can, I can tell myself that right now. Um, but uh, yeah. It was great. Um, I bought I bought a few things. I still haven't shown you guys all my Anime Expo prints, but I took a bunch of them to the framers already. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been the worst about that. Um, but uh, I found, oh my gosh, at the Mondo booth. So at the Mondo booth, they have like really gorgeous specialized posters. And every day, some of them were the same, but some of them rotated. So, like, they had a Terminator poster that was gorgeous. Um, the one today was The Thing, and that was beautiful. They had a bunch of Pacific Rim posters, two of which I bought. And they are, like, I'm so happy with these posters. I don't even care. It was just, like, the art style is gorgeous. They are bright in just the way that I love. Like, regardless of if you thought Pacific Rim was a good movie or not, if you love monster movies and you love robot movies, um, these prints would have been perfect for you because they were just gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with feelings over these posters. So I bought them and then um, I bought one of them because they were out of all of one of them. So I, I bought a TB one of them, not the pair, but I think he's still going to really, really love it. And, uh, what else did I get? Literally everything that I always get is, is posters and prints. It's my, it's my weakness. It's my big weakness. Like every time I go to an event, I'm like, where's the artist alley? And then I blow all, like any amount of money that I was like, this is how much I'm going to spend while I'm here. Blow it all, blow it all on prints. <laughs> Um, which is fine. I mean, I'm always happy with it. I'm perfectly fine with it. The problem is when I have to hang stuff, that's when I start going, where should this go? <laughs> oh no, these don't look good together at all. Um, but yeah, so then, uh, so Saturday happened and that was fantastic. 
Um, I met CB girl. Did I meet her Saturday night or did I meet her? No, I met her Friday night. Wait, did I meet her Friday night? Yeah, because Friday was also Jeannie's birthday. So um, met CB girl and that was super fun. I had never met her before. Um, we got along fantastically. I met Markiplier. I had never met him before and he was fantastic and super energetic and sweet. And uh, saw Noel again, saw Ginger Hayes again and, and commissioned a thing from her that is really silly, but I can't wait to get it. And yeah, it was just like super, it was super fun. I find that the more people that I know there that are either working there or like, or like involved in one thing or another, um, it's really fun to just walk around because you never know who you're going to see and you never know who you're going to recognize and be like, ah, but, uh, yeah, there was so much cool stuff there and I got lost constantly. I would walk for like two minutes at a time and then be like, oh my gosh, where am I? Like, it was awful. But I feel bad because the Blizzard booth had a limited run thing that was a Zergling that you folded inside out and it turned into a Baneling. And it was so cool. So my roommates were like, if you can get one of those, you will let us know. Like, grab us one. We will pay you back. And I was like, sure thing, man. So this morning, I checked with them. I was like, are you going to have more on Sunday morning? And they were like, yes but come early. And I said, okay. So I got there super early. The line was already really long. And I was like, no. So I got in line. Um, well, actually first I went to the front desk and I was like, am I going to be able to get one of those if I get in line right now? And they were like, I don't know, maybe. I was like, you buttholes. So I got in line and I was there for not honestly, not that long before they were like, all right, all the bandlings or earlings are gone. I was like, no, come on. They were very, very limited run. Um, which was too bad, but, but I tried, I tried real hard. Um, yeah, that was, that was like my one, my one thing that I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for Sarah and Chris. I'm going to get it for them. And then I, and I didn't, <laughs> and then I didn't, Ugh. but, uh, but yeah, there was so much cool stuff at Comic-Con. Like I was honestly, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did because I don't like gobs of people. I thought that the people would ruin it for me. <laughs> Not like people individually, but people as just like a swarm, right? I was just like, oh, this is going to be awful to navigate, which sometimes it was. But, um, but like the event itself was so cool. So cool. If you're ever able to go to Comic-Con, it's like worth it. And I've also heard that the Seattle Comic-Con, the Emerald City Comic-Con, is really cool as well. Um, so I'm interested in going to that. But yeah, it was really, really cool. I had a lot of fun. Thank you guys for, for um, being patient and understanding that I couldn't put up videos. But I hope that this was a good recap for you <laughs> of my experiences there. And uh, this week, uh, lots of Polaris stuff, but I'm also moving. So we're going to have lots to talk about, probably. And this poor guy, this poor guy doesn't even realize that we're moving. And he's just so happy that I'm home. And he's suddenly going to be so upset that he's not in the same house he's been so used to for like a year and a half. Huh? Oh, you're so precious. I missed you. But yeah, I'm going to go. But I hope that you guys had an amazing weekend. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.